Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon to you all. Welcome to the seminar on Efficient Port Logistic Management and Trade Competitiveness of Bangladesh, organized by Dhaka Chamber of Commerce and Industry DCCI. Today, we have amongst us Mr. Mohammad Mustafa Kamal, Secretary, Ministry of Shipping, Government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh as the Chief Guest. Today's keynote paper will be presented by Dr. M. Mashur Riyaj, Chairman, Policy Exchange of Bangladesh. The seminar will be chaired by Mr. Rizwan Rahman, President, Dhaka Chamber. We have also with us Mr. Shamim Ul Haq, Country Director, DP World Bangladesh. Mr. Kobi Rahmet, President, Bangladesh Freight Forwarders Association. Soyod Ali Johir Rizvi, Managing Director, Summit Alliance Port Limited. Mr. Lee Peng Ji, Vice President, Group Business Development, PSA International Private Limited. And Mr. Mohammad Jafar Alam, Joint Secretary, Member, Chittagong Port Authority as respected panel discussants. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now kindly request Mr. Rizwan Rahman, President Hakka Chamber, to hand over a memento to our Chief Guest, Mr. Mohammad Mustafa Kamal, Secretary, Ministry of Shipping, Government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, at the very outset, I would like to request President Dhaka Chamber, Mr. Rizwan Rahman, to give his welcome address and moderate the rest of the sessions. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Today's Chief Guest, Mr. Mohammad Mustafa Kamal, the Honorable Secretary, Ministry of Shipping, Government of the People's Republic of Bangladesh. Our keynote presenter, Dr. M. Masuriyaz, Chairman, Policy Exchange Bangladesh. Respected panel discussants, Mr. Lee Pengi, Vice President, Group Business Development of PS International. We have with us today the President of BAFA, the Bangladesh Trade Forwarders Association, uh, Mr. Kabir Ahmed, Mr. Sayed Ali Johar Rizvi, Managing Director of Summit Alliance Sport Limited. Mr. Shami Mulhaq, the country director of DP World Bangladesh. And we also have, along with Ms., uh, Mr. Pengi, uh, Mr. Zafar Alam, the honorable member of the Chittagong Port Authority, who has joined us virtually today. Our colleagues from Dhaka Chamber, friends from the print and electronic media, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu Alaikum and a very good afternoon to all of you. At the very outset, I would like to welcome you all to the timely seminar on efficient port logistics management and the trade competitiveness of Bangladesh, which is organized by Dhaka Chamber. And of course, I would, on behalf of my board and my colleagues, I would like to extend our sincere gratitude to the chief guests, the keynote presenters, and all the respected panelists who have joined us physically as well as virtually. Bangladesh. As you know, it need not be repeated, but I still will, and I proudly do it. It is one of the most remarkable success stories in the developing world, driven by prudent macroeconomic management. We have a robust foreign trade and investment, and economy has witnessed for almost more than a decade, 6% plus GDP growth. And then there was the pandemic, which stopped the whole world. But however, we managed to bounce back and report 7.25% GDP growth in the fiscal year of 2022. Bangladesh has been the fifth uh, most resilient economy in terms of the COVID recovery index, and of course, uh, which was backed by a rapid resurgence and consistent economic competitiveness. And foreign trade has become one of the key enablers of the economic competitiveness, because needless to mention, we have seen a rise in our FDI post the pandemic, and of course, a 15% rise in our exports at the peak of the pandemic, which shows that Bangladesh is the next destination for everybody. Now, when it comes to port logistics management, it is an important element of the international trade and competitiveness since seaports have always been the nerve center of our foreign trade. When we talk about seaports, we bring our 130 year old heritage, which is the Chattogram port, which has been the backbone of the entire trade of this country. And this specific export that I've been mentioning is obviously backed by the logistical support this Chattogram port has been providing us. 
and it accounts for actually 90%, if I'm not mistaken, 90% of our international trade and uh, with the handling capacity of 3.2 million TEUs, uh, 24 equivalent units. And I think they're looking forward to enhancing it to 145 million. So that is the long-term vision. And with the consistent cap enhancement capacity of the Chottogram port has been recognized as the 64th busiest port in the Lloyd's list. And the Lloyd's list, as you know, uh, has been ranking all the popular ports in the region. And uh, now all these positive signs, but there are certain challenges. Whenever we speak about opportunities, the views of challenges come up. So let me point out to the earlier uh, reported, the World Bank's doing index, the logistics performance index, and many others, including the incremental cost of doing business. That is not something where Bangladesh has been uh, a champion in. It is still a learning phase for us. However, a, regardless of the environment, we have had our foreign investors, our domestic investors, and they have been doing business in Bangladesh, enjoying the highest return on investment, enjoying good policies related to FDI. But always, as I said, there is a room for improvement. Now, considering the growing importance of the port-led trade, efficient port development, including the logistics cap capacity, the container handling, the storage, and uh, relevant uh, hinterland uh, infrastructures, and transport connectivity, which is also utmost important, are essential to strengthen the operational efficiency of our supply chain system of the uh, cross-border trade. Now, it is worth mentioning that our international trade has exceeded over 150 billion. Based on the gradual hike, 85 billion exports have been targeted for the year 2024 and 100 billion targeted for 2026, respectively. This is one of those targets to achieve the LDC graduation post-2026, which will obviously eventually the target remains to uh, portray Bangladesh as a maritime hub and a maritime economy, turning Bangladesh into a thriving economic hub by 2030. And then, of course, our ultimate goal of 2041. So as trade is the lifeline of our evolving economy to contribute to this export-led economic growth, and specifically post-LDC graduation era, as I mentioned, we do have three years of grace period up until 2029, but there are going to be a lot of challenges which we will have to address. And regarding how to address them, we have a very uh, strong uh, keynote presenter who has uh, sufficient expertise in the logistics arena, who will be, uh, we hope to hear the possible um, uh, recommendations, whether it comes to the Potenga terminal, whether it is related to capital dredging, the outer bay terminal uh, of the Chittagong port, a larger jetty construction, and many other technical issues, which will be discussed today, I'm sure. And alongside considering the logistics priority and proposed logistics policy. And as you know, that there is a, a logistics infrastructure development working committee under the patronage of the prime minister's office, where uh, Dhaka Chamber is a member of that committee. In fact, Bafa, uh, the Bafa president is the member of the committee. And this has been initiated by the business initiative leading development, the build, the think tank wing of the Dhaka Chamber, Chitt Chittagong Chamber, and the Metropolitan Chamber. And uh, we are creating the roadmap of the national logistics policy. And it is time that logistics is acknowledged as a sector, as a whole. So since Bangladesh is heavily integrated in the global trading system, this geoeconomic context often reshapes our trading trend. So long story short, um, a serene port logistics system with higher infrastructure investment, likewise, the most efficient ports in the world, where we have Shanghai, we have Singapore, we have Hong Kong, uh, for seamless cross-border trade. And to obtain this uh, economic transformation, uh, Bangladesh, Chittagong port, Mongla port, and the other ones that are coming up now needs to be of those caliber. So I believe this must need a discussion. Uh, we'll set a new agenda to take our cross-border tr trade into a new stature through an integrated and uh, to secure the port logistics infrastructure post the LDC graduation. We have with us our chief guest who's been here despite his busy schedule. And we believe that the recommendations will be uh, well reported. And we, we, we wish to create an outcome report of today's discussion. Um, after our panelists pick, we will uh, obviously um, open the floor for people to participate in the discussions. And so that we can create a detailed outcome report where it will help the honorable secretary to see the clear picture of the, what the entire private sector is demanding. And without further ado, I'm not going to prolong my speech. At this point of time, I would like to invite
Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Mashur Riyaj. Thank you, uh, Rizwan Rahman, President Dhaka Chamber, today's uh, chair. Uh, today's uh, chief guest, uh, Honorable Secretary, Ministry of Shipping, uh, Mr. Mustafa Kamal, uh, President Dhaka Chamber, Vice Senior Vice President, Board Members, Distinguished Panelists, Ladies and gentlemen, indeed a great pleasure for me to be able to join you and be able to present the keynote on this absolutely important uh, issue for Bangladesh's development. Uh, I thank Dhaka Chamber for undertaking this uh, initiative, uh, for holding a dialogue, facility and bringing the important stakeholders, convening the important stakeholders around this very important topic and thus setting off a very constructive dialogue, which as the president Dhaka Chamber said, hopefully will actually also help the government of Bangladesh, particularly the Ministry of Shipping and the other policy makers to understand uh, the, the, the needs in terms of the uh, competitiveness linkages, in terms of the, uh, uh, the current performance, as well as where we need to go in, uh, for policy as well as markets action. So over the next 20 minutes uh, or so, um, I'm going to uh, take you through this keynote across these six areas of, uh, of the presentation. We're gonna talk about why uh, the issue of uh, trade and investment is so critical for Bangladesh's development aspiration. Uh, the links to competitiveness as well as trace facilitation in that aspiration or the development vision. Uh, why ports, as well as the overall logistics is so important for this whole uh, development priorities that Bangladesh have. The current state in this particular space, the, some of the challenges which require attention, both from policymakers as well as from the private sector, and then some of the policy priorities going forward. Uh, Bangladesh, I think its development success requires no new introduction. It's been a development role model. Uh, within five decades of its independence, it made its way into a middle-income country, not matched by many other examples in the world. And we also qualified for uh, graduation out of the LDC list of, uh, in 2026. Uh, institution, global institutions like IMF, the Standard Chartered, all project Bangladesh to be a $500 billion economy by 2025. But we, as we speak, 2022, we are already close to $450 billion economy. By 2025, I'm pretty sure we will exceed a $500 billion mark. Uh, now, based on this very impressive development success, Bangladesh aspires to become a high income country 20, by 2041 as en enshrined in its vision 2041. And on, on its way to be a high income country, by 2031, it wants to, it desires to be a upper middle income country. And it's very doable. However, it's not going to be easy. There are certain very important targets, particularly in investment, trade, employment, infrastructure, that are going to be, uh, the Bangladesh will have to secure those uh, in order for the country to become a high income country as envisioned in the excellent vision document, the vision 2041. So it's doable, but it's not easy. There are certain areas where Bangladesh will have to step up the games. For example, if we want to be a high income country, 
Our current per capita income of around $2,800 will have to increase uh, by four times to that of $12,000 or more. Uh, the growth, which is around 7%, needs to go up to almost double digit, 9.9%. Uh, private investment to GDP, most I would say the most important one, will have to go up 70 percentage point from where it is now, around 23% to that of almost 37%. Exports, uh, which stands uh, around $50 billion now, will have to go up at least six times, above $300 billion. And so does the FDI. If you take the last five years average, it's about 0.5% of GDP or 0.6%. It needs to go up to uh, 3% of GDP and all doable, but quite a tall order. Coming closer to our topic today, even in the infrastructure, particularly connectivity infrastructure, uh, the projections are that on the sea uh, trade traffic, the seaport cargo. Um, currently, Bangladesh uh, has, in 2021, Bangladesh had the ability to uh, deal with 3.6 million container TEUs per year and 122 million uh, tons of bulk goods. Each of them have to increase 1300%, 1300%. The container traffic to 48.2 million container TEUs a year from current 3.6. So it's doable, but it's not easy. In five decades, we have come to 3.6 million. In next 20 19 years, we have to go up to 48.2 million. So quite a tall order, but very much doable. So similar for dealing with the bulk goods. Uh, now, all of these, the growth, the investment, the GDP, the infrastructure, uh, as I say, it's doable, but certain things need to happen. And one of that thing, one of that key priority that Bangladesh really needs to ensure is the competitiveness, without which the necessary investment, the employment, the export, FDI, all are going to be difficult. If you look at Bangladesh's export basket, uh, we, are, we need a diversification as soon as we can. This was a need of yesterday. Bangladesh's export basket had RMG as about 82, 83% last year. If you go back to 2011, it was 78%. So the concentration, unfortunately, has gone up when we actually needed diversification. Uh, Bangladesh is, uh, even within RMG and overall in the economy, the value upgradation need is critical. Bangladesh currently focuses on labor intensive, uh, low skill production. It really needs to go up to high skill technology intensive production. We are going to face increased international markets pressure following our graduation when the international support measures such as GSP are going to be withdrawn. European Union where 60% or a little more than that of our exports go, where we pay 0% duty at the moment, we are going to pay somewhere closer to 10% import duty in those markets. So as you know, as, uh, as, as members of Dhaka Chamber, uh, as very active businessmen and women, that even a 1% increase in a cost in international markets is actually a very difficult uh, proposition. Uh, now, where do we stand? I think uh, we need some help on this. Sure. It got stuck, means there is some box which we need to remove. Uh, okay, all right. I think so. But where do we stand on this competitiveness agenda? Uh, so, Mr. Vatwari, I think it's stuck. It's not moving. The, the PowerPoint is frozen. Yeah. Uh, just but let me continue to speak as they said the technology, uh, sort out the technology. So, ah, it's moving now. Okay, great. Thank you. Amar Kuno, you chill. Do I need to do anything different? I think this is the one. Yeah, the mics. The mics. The television mics. Are. We can't have them on the keyboard. Ah, there you go. Ah, okay. I, I, I take you on your feet. So, but where do we stand on this competitiveness? Uh, if we look at the the Global Competitiveness Index by the World Economic Forum, the latest 2019, out of 141 countries, we were ranked 105th. 
Uh, if we look at some of our comparative economies, India, Vietnam, China is in a different league, but we still uh, sort of put there just to show where such big economies present. India is 68, Vietnam is 67. And if you drill down in some of the components of this competitiveness index, infrastructure, 114th Bangladesh out of 141. And at the same time, our competitive economies are in the 70s, seven, India 70th, Vietnam 77th. Now defunct doing business uh, index, which used to be the sort of most popular, comp most comprehensive uh, measure of a country's business environment, which is a key pillar of a country's competitiveness. Bangladesh in the last one, although it was making progress, but it still ranked 168th <laughs> out of 190 countries. If we look at some of the, you know, uh, some of the skills position of Bangladesh, uh, in the in the business skills category, we are way behind Vietnam, but little above India. However, when we go to technology and data science, which are increasingly going to determine the competitiveness of business in the next few decades, we are way behind our competitors countries like India and Vietnam. So our competitiveness has significant room for improvement. And again, it is doable. It's not, it may be a, sort of a, a very painstaking, but it is very much possible. Our, our policymakers, our civil service, our private sector, our expert groups, I think they all stand ready uh, with the right plan and the right intention. They all can be executed, but it needs to happen. Now, increasingly, trade competitiveness is becoming an uh, important or a sort of influential pillar of the overall competitiveness. And trade facilitation is the sort of magic word over there. Uh, what is trade facilitation? Basically removing the barriers to do uh, sort of trade or effective trade or efficient trade. According to the World Trade Organization, uh, if you have a weak trade facilitation environment, the competitive disadvantage that you have is that a shipment value can go up, cost can go up as high as 24%. But if you, have a, if you have an improving and efficient trade facilitation uh, arrangement, uh, your trade cost can be reduced by up to 14%. Uh, now, what is trade facilitation? They have at the border issues and behind the border issues. Uh, behind the border are your product market regulations, your, your factor market regulations, standards, which influence your exports and imports, import substitution, import, export manufacturing, and the overall trade. But more importantly, there are at the border issues. Number one, border clearance, whether it's customs, ports, standards, explosives, dangerous goods, uh, all together. And at the same time, the at the border infrastructure or the infrastructure ecosystem that support the at the border efficiencies and so on. And that's where I think increasingly trade competitiveness is hinging on as we go forward. If we look at Vietnam's example, uh, you know, in 2000, their total export was $14 billion. 2020, uh, $265 billion. 2019, I know last year it has exceeded $300 billion. Their total export products went up from 1100 uh, to that close to 4,000, quadrupling, almost. Four. What did they do differently? One of their key strategy was to improve their trade facilitation, create a very competitive trade environment. And the way they did it, deregulation and reforms in border clearance policies and regulations, customs and all others, but also heavy investment in infrastructure and technology involving port systems and logistic systems. And we all see the benefit that Vietnam is reaping uh, as a result of that. Now, where does Bangladesh's trade facilitation stand or the overall trade competitiveness? Uh, it needs to improve. Current trade facilitation environment does not support the aspirations or even the development performance, the economic performance that we have demonstrated and secured, the trade facilitation or the trade competitiveness is way behind our overall development performance. That means we can do better, but needs to be. How? Why do we say it is not at par? If you look at the trading across border from the World Bank doing business last ranking, if we look at you know line two and line three, time to export, border and documentary clearance in terms of hours. Bangladesh, 315 hours, uh, Vietnam and 105. India, based on their extensive reforms between 2016 and 2021, 64 hours. Same uh, consignment for exports. If you look at the dollar, well, you know, the cost, 
$633 for Bangladesh average, Vietnam $429, India $270. And if you look at some of the other uh, trade indicators, whether it's trade freedom index or the enabling trade index or just trade openness, you'll see we have significant improvement room. And as a result, what the issues we are dealing with, uh, you are dealing with as private sector uh, traders as well as manufacturing and other uh, sort of services businesses, longer clearance time than or, or sometime unpredictable clearance time, uh, port, oper you know, uh, goods taking longer time, but also getting damaged at the port, according to a World Bank report, 35% of the products export and import do get damaged in one way or other uh, while waiting at the port. Uh, we also have a coordination maze, 39 government agencies are involved in border clearance, but they have very little interoperability among them, often making decisions on their own and in isolation. So now, if we, if we go to sort of closure to the logistics, the logistics performance index, again, a subset of your trade competitiveness uh, assessment. Again, this logistics performance index shows that Bangladesh needs to significantly strengthen its logistics quality and efficiency if it wants to be export competitive in the global markets, to get to that $300 billion mark, to deal with the imposition of tariff following L LDC graduation and so on. Where does Bangladesh stand? 100th in the last LPI, but Bangladesh's competitors, India 42, Indonesia 51, Vietnam 45. Uh, where does Bangladesh lag behind uh, by the biggest margin? Customs and infrastructure. You see the scores are the lowest, 2.33 in customs, infrastructure 2.36. So in Bangladesh's sort of own absolute assessment as well, compared to other areas in Bangladesh in, in overall logistics, the customs and infrastructure, that really pulls Bangladesh down in terms of trade efficiency. And that's where the logistics and the port system comes into the scene so importantly. Uh, the Bangladesh has one of the highest logistics costs in the world. Uh, the LPI gives you a sense about that, but some more specific example, if you take uh, trucking costs, freights on truck, uh, per ton per kilometer cost in Bangladesh for a seven ton truck, uh, it's about 12 cents. In India, it's little over two cents. In Indonesia, it's little over six cents. So imagine the level of disadvantage we are rendered with in terms of cost effectiveness and, and efficiency. And Bangladesh's overall uh, logistics cost varies between 4.5% to that of almost 48%, depending on the sector that you're dealing with. But if you bring it to an average, it is easily above 20%, which is a very high logistics cost for a country which aspires to uh, become high income based on an export-led growth strategy. Uh, now, where does and why are the modern ports important? They are important for efficient integration with global markets, uh, connectivity, capability, and competitiveness. Uh, in terms of connectivity, for an export-led growth strategy, uh, for export competitiveness, it's extremely important that a country like Bangladesh is able to efficiently connect to the global markets, regional markets, where potential is extremely high for Bangladesh. At the moment, the regional trade, uh, the actual performance is very low across South Asia, but also for Bangladesh. And also this connectivity connects the hinterland and the production centers to the trade gateways. In terms of capacity, uh, you know, the most important capacity for modern ports that it delivers is the ability to handle uh, bigger vessels uh, in a quicker turnaround time at much less cost. All of these lead to a competitive supply chain and particip competitive participation uh, in global value chain, which are all going to be extremely important for Bangladesh in its export-led growth strategy. Uh, in addition to the capacity connect connectivity, capacity competitiveness uh, framework, there is also very direct economic benefits, as we would all know from uh, uh, modern ports. Uh, if we can reduce the dwell time in Chittagong port by, just by one day from current time, the exports of Bangladesh will go up about by 7.4%. And that would increase wages and employment 
in the greater Chittagong area, as well as across the Dhaka Chittagong trade corridor. So direct economic benefits await Bangladesh if Bangladesh can bring in these modern ports. But uh, where are we in terms of our port capacity, port infrastructure? So the good news is uh, due to you know, constant demand from the private sector, as well as good intention from the public sector, the capacity in Bangladesh has been gradually increasing over the past years. So Chittagong port, if you, uh, you know, uh, the, over the five years, they are now average growth in container handling is four, more than 4%. Uh, average growth in the number of vessel handling is more than 5.6%. And you can see there are bigger numbers for Mongla, but obviously Mongla handles very small part of Bangladesh trade. So the Chittagong numbers are extremely significant. And at the same time, uh, Bangladesh has also undertaken some uh, really important initiative in terms of uh, improving its logist port-led logistics uh, system. The Potenga Container Terminal, which will add about 400,000 TUs every year, it goes into operation, I think, very soon. The government has appointed transaction advisor to actually negotiate with a uh, uh, internationally reputed foreign operator. We have Matarbari, uh, the bulk port is ready, which is again going to uh, add 1.9 million tons uh, capacity, commodity handling capacity, but there is a container port also planned. We have Pyra port, which is a river port. It's already in operation, but the most important one, the game changer is going to be the Bay Container Terminal, which is going to be uh, expansion of the Chittagong port, but not in the same location. Very fortunately on the sea, not on the river, which will help. And we will hear from our uh, stellar panelists, uh, where I, I myself am looking forward to learn from uh, Mr. Rizvi, Shamim Bhai, and, and, and Kobir Bhai, uh, because they really do it every day and in, in a, they're bringing global best practices to Bangladesh. The Bay Container Terminal will increase Bangladesh's ability to bring in larger size vessel, for example, from current 3,500 TU size vessel to more than 6,700, uh, 6,000 or 7,000 TU vessel. Uh, the draft is going to be at least 30% more than the current uh, ability of the port. So bigger size vessels can come in. Uh, and at the same time, there is also a Chittagong port being proposed for connecting the Mishurai Special Economic Zone. And at the same time, the Dirashram uh, multimodal uh, hub uh, right in Joydepur, connecting sort of uh, Dhaka and the northern side to the seaside, uh, sorry, uh, sea-based trade gateways of Bangladesh. Uh, but in terms of efficiency, we still lag behind our comparators. If you look at some of the in very sort of uh, popular and very robust international uh, indices, the liner shipping connectivity index, Bangladesh in a score from zero to 100 uh, falls behind again, India, Indonesia, Vietnam, who are really going to be our competitor, whether it's in RMG, light manufacturing, or digital economy or agribusiness. If you look at the container port performance index by Standard and Poor and World Bank, uh, Bangladesh Chittagong port is ranked 341 out of 370, but Mumbai, India's Jahalnal Nehru is 54, uh, Vietnam's Haiphong is 63. Uh, and the, the, the sort of critical factor behind that is efficiency, labor productivity, technology, which are making the big difference and private participation, which I will outline a little bit. If we can address some of these issues, inefficiencies, I think the gain that Bangladesh is looking at is significant. Bangladesh can reduce its logistics cost, which is already very high, anywhere between seven to 35%. If Bangladeshi, uh, you know, trade corridor congestions from Dhaka to Chittagong through the ports can be reduced. Uh, according to a World Bank report, the speed, average speed of a container or a freight truck on Dhaka Chittagong Highway, which deals with 90, 95% of total trade, is only 19 kilometer per hour. That's less than the speed of uh, cars fly on Gulshan Avenue or on Airport Road. If you can just uh, take it to 40 kilometer, which is not very high, Bangladesh's trade exports can go up by almost 8%. Just, just by making this possible. And uh, obviously, without the overall corridor congestion, there can be a 35.5% co lower cost for trucks or freight movements across this corridor. Now, what are the challenges that are holding us back? Absence of a national 
a holistic national planning document, the national logistic strategy or a plan. We do not have it. As a result, plan uh, growth is a bit unplanned and also not timely. Entry barriers for private investors in general, but foreign investors in particular. The 49% cap on foreign investors to come into the many subsectors of logistics is really holding the growth of those sectors back because we have great companies like Summit Port Alliance, which are domestic, but there are many sectors where we need the expertise, technology, and the capital, which can only come from at the initial period from foreign investors and you know gradually the bangladeshi players can grow with the technology transfer and capacity uh, transfer and so on container dwell times are high 11 days i think for import four days for export it's really very high compared to a country which is at bangladesh's level in economic sophistication uh, complex port governance 15 ministries and more than 20 regulatory agencies they govern and i'll show you a slide how the maze looks like uh, uh you know maybe now i can do that look at this this is the institutional governance maze that actually govern port sector you have more than 15 ministries more than 20 agencies policy infrastructure uh, you know services enforcement all together so this maze is really uh, making it difficult for quick and effective processing decisions and response to any sort of updates or adjustment in the strategy. Uh, uh, you know, uh, some policies uh, are now leading to inefficiencies. For example, customs only allow 38 type of commodities to be cleared outside the port. Everything else needs to be cleared in the port, creating congestion. Customs and, and, and port do not allow the ICDs or CFS, uh, container freight stations, to be set up in general, outside Chittagong area. I think the rule is 20 kilometer outside port, but broadly in Chittagong area. But if companies could set up their ICDs around Bangladesh or around production centers, the efficiency could have gone up. Uh, limited private sector participation in port sector. Uh, Bangladesh follows a tool port model. Most efficient ports around the world follow landlord port model, where the government is, is, is the owner of the facility, you know, the infrastructure, the land, and everything. Private sector comes in and invests and operates, gives a return to the government, but also recovers the investment that they put in and has the incentive to make sure the port runs efficiently. Conge uh, and then Chittagong port depth, the current port is 9.1 meter, much shallower than most of the ports in uh, which are known as efficient ports but obviously bay container terminal is expected to solve that to a great extent and then several inefficiencies in the port they result in long pre barthing as well as uh, other processing in uh, so con you know there is a huge vehicle congestion that takes place in the port just because the way the routes within the ports are mapped for the trucks and freight freight uh, carriers uh, on an average a crane in an efficient port it moves between 22 to 28 times cycles every hour. In Chittagong port, it's 8 to 12. So it's, it's much slower in terms of what, it, what needs to be done. National logistics policy, as I uh, mentioned, is really the overarching guiding sort of uh, vision strategy that actually gives you uh, sort of this, you know, uh, 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 direction, gives you a sort of pathway and brings everybody together. India. Prime Minister Narendra Modi just published the India's national logistics policy two days ago, Saturday. Uh, this is going to take India way, way, way ahead. Vietnam, they did it back in 2015-2016. Uh, they have a national, uh, national plan. So does Malaysia, Indonesia, South Korea, Sri Lanka, Myanmar. They either have a master logistics plan, logistics strategy, or logistics law. Uh, providing the overarching guidance and Bangladesh really needs to move there. So way forward, as I say, developing holistic strategy, uh, developing master plan on ports in light of a national logistics policy so that the growth can be projected in light of demand, the type of ports, type of facilities, capacity, efficiency, all can be then sort of projected, keeping in mind where Bangladesh needs to be by 2041,
the two international frameworks that ports and logistics facilities need to adhere to. Bangladesh, particularly the ports, are yet to comply with these things. Uh, you know, competition in logistics service and infrastructure markets by reducing the regulatory barriers. Uh, to start with, just take warehousing and, and, and storages, which support the ports. Uh, they're all governed by 1958 warehousing law, which was done only for agriculture. And we do not have any new one. So we badly need a new sort of logistics policy, but also uh, laws and, and, and regulations to facilitate investment and operations in these areas. Uh, and finally, adopting private participation, PPP, as a mode to develop the infrastructure in ports particularly and sort of private participation holistically in logistics development. Uh, this, I just wanted to share this example um, on uh, inter multimodality. Uh, this is part of uh, Chongqing Connectivity Initiative, China-Singapore Connectivity Initiative, which is known as Chongqing Connectivity Initiative. And I, I saw my friend Pengi on the screen from PSA and PSA is a big part of that. Hopefully we can hear from him as well about the effectiveness of such multimodal trade transportation system. Uh, here, you know, Chongqing was sort of, un, as, as part of this multimodal plan, uh, Chongqing was created as a hub, which kind of uh, sort of brings in uh, cargo from China's Western side, which is much more through rail link and, and sort of, uh, you know, uh, what do you call that? Uh, consolidation is, is it takes place through here in Chongqing. It's faster than bringing through barge on Yangtze River. It is also faster than connecting uh, sort of uh, through trucks to the Guangzhou port. And from Chongqing, it actually goes out to the ultimate destination through this under this connectivity uh, where uh, from Singapore, they all reach, uh, the cargoes reach the world as well as ASEAN countries. Just between China and ASEAN, this connectivity, uh, the Chongqing Connectivity Initiative, which mainly relies on multimodality of trade transportation, is expected to take the trade volume to $180 billion between China and ASEAN countries. If you add the entire world, it's going to be many fold more. Uh, as I say, private participation is really the, now the name of the game. You know, uh, Bangladesh really needs to bring in uh, as much private participation as possible in developing its ports, but also developing the overall logistics system. If you go back to 1980s, most early 1980s, most ports were government owned. But over the last 40 years, uh, the increasing trend is private uh, operator developed and operated ports are taking the sort of mainstay. And as a result, there is a 200% increase in port efficiency globally. Cost of handling containers and ships have gone down. Turnaround times have also gone down. And PPP models work well because you know uh, the the P private operator they understand the market dynamics, the demands, and the supply dynamics better than uh, the government regulators. Because government regulator, what they do really good is policy setting and regulating. When it comes to understanding markets, nobody beats private sector. And that's why in PPP, if the private operators are allowed to develop and operate, that actually uh, makes it much more efficient. And as I said, in current context where we have a really uh, difficult global economic scenario with some impact on Bangladesh as well, I think freeing up government fund is really important. So if you go the PPP route, it basically frees up public sector fund for health, education, security, and this sort of commercially feasible projects can be developed with private private funds. And that's why I'm very encouraged. And I heard from Honorable Secretary just three days ago at the ERD, uh, you know, and, and I'm also aware through my own professional engagement, you know, the Bay Container Terminal, which the government has decided to uh, sort of adopt the PPP route. And we have companies like PSA and DPW, DP World who are being, who are, be, you know, sort of in the discussion with the government. I think these are going to be excellent in terms of bringing in the best practice, not only in terms of port development, but also uh, container handling, container management, port management, labor management, adoption of technology, adoption of climate resilience. 
uh, and, and this is the way to go forward. But we have to make sure when we allow private participation, particularly PPP, the rule of law applying for that particular project needs to be very consistent and very clear, the interpretations, uh, clear allocation of responsibilities, you know, public infrastructure like railroad, connecting Bay Container Terminal, connecting Patenga Terminal, it's a public infrastructure project. Uh, dredging, that is a must to bring in a big port in Chittagong to operate efficiently, is a, usually a public sector responsibility. And the investment to develop the terminal, the technology, operating it, it's, it is a private sector one. And there needs to be fair and consistent playing field. There are multiple terminals, then there can be multiple ports. We need to make sure uh, that all terminals of a port treated in the same way, and there no uh, particular port, no particular terminal gets any advantage, uh, undue advantage. And finally, a bankable investment case for ports to be developed under private participation, where the port operators are allowed to determine the commercial agreements between them and their user. They're ab able to determine the tariff, means the pricing between the port users and the port operators, and no restrictions on any sort of uh, port related delivery and services within the port and only then this private participation which turned out to be a really effective mode of developing modern ports can come into Bangladesh in the form of Bay Container Terminal in the form of a future Matarbari Container Terminal as well as the uh, the current Potenga Terminal which should be in operation soon so thank you once again for giving me the time and for your patient hearing. And uh, I uh, look forward to hearing from our very stellar panelists. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Riaz. Um, very uh, comprehensive. Of course, uh, everybody had their attention. Mm -hmm. I saw the chief guest taking 101 notes on your comments. So I'm sure he's going to respond when it's uh, time. And uh, of course, there has been a few recommendations. We will now leave it to the panelists to speak their minds and uh, add any valued recommendations. So before we start, I would like to not ordering uh, or following any protocol. I will start with the um, our virtual guest. Where did they vanish? Yeah. OK. We can hear you, but we can't see you. <laughs> yes. Um, so yes, at the very, very, very outset, we have Mr. Lee. Is the vice president of the group business development of PSA Singapore, uh, PSA International. Um, we um, invited uh, Mr. Lee um, here to share his experience and knowledge on the port logistics uh, management in Singapore. Not only that, and of course, uh, we want to hear your thoughts on how um, Bangladesh can upgrade the port logistics and to ensure our uh, ever growing global trade. Thank Over you. to you, Mr. Lee. Thank you, thank you. And, and sorry, I can't join uh, physically because I had to uh, rush back to Singapore last week. Yeah, uh, so perhaps uh, allow me to start. Uh, Honorable Secretary, uh, Ministry of Shipping, uh, Mr. Mustafa Kamal, uh, President Dhaka Chamber, Mr. Rizwan Rahman, uh, Chairman Policy Exchange, uh, Dr. Masru Riyas, uh, distinguished panelists and participants. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Lee Pengi. I'm the Vice President of uh, Group Business Development at PSA International. I'm delighted uh, to attend this seminar virtually to share our perspective on a very important topic of port competitiveness and how it enhances the trade competitiveness of Bangladesh. Uh, let me start by, by giving a, a short introduction of uh, PSA International. Uh, PSA International is a leading port group and trusted partner to cargo stakeholders. One in 10 containers globally is actually handled by a PSA uh, terminal. Our flagship operations is in Singapore and Antwerp, and our global network encompasses 160 locations in 42 countries today. Our portfolio comprises more than 60 deep sea, rail and inland terminals, as well as now affiliated businesses in supply chain management, logistic, marine, as well as digital services. We actively collaborate with our partners and customers to offer intelligent port-centric uh, cargo solutions, uh, for cargo owners as well as service providers. And uh, uh, some of you may know, uh, since 2018, uh, PSA Marine Bangladesh, a subsidiary of uh, PSA Marine, has started its operations in Bangladesh, providing marine services to the summit LNG terminal located at the Moskali Island at the Bay of Bengal. 
We understand that uh, Bangladesh intends to modernize its ports to support its uh, economic growth. Uh, as a leading global port group, uh, we are keen to contribute to the development of the port sector by sharing our experience and expertise in developing and managing uh, busy hub ports. And the focus is really on every aspect of how trade works uh, from the physical to the digital and of course in partnerships with regulators to simplify the compliance needs of shippers and consignees. Uh, let me share some examples of our expertise and experience. Uh, as a global port operator, we have strong expertise in developing and operating container terminals to meet the port and the communities. PSA has undertaken many greenfield projects in many parts of the world. Uh, one example is uh, PSA Mumbai, located in Navashiva, India's premier container gateway, and our facilities have been operational since January of 2018. Besides terminal design and management, PSA is also able to leverage on other strengths and capabilities built globally over the years and covering multiple areas. Our global franchise value are centralized in Singapore and full support is given to our overseas terminals. We also have a, a very long history of innovation, including developing our proprietary technology that help to optimize port operations and interfaces with port communities. Global TOS, Global Tornet, Portnet are two such uh, important uh, innovations. We seek to extend our value add beyond the port community to cargo owners and has also set up recently PSA Cargo Solutions a few years ago. Our partners and customers are now able to utilize PSA's extensive connections and range of differentiated Pop Plus value adding services for faster time to market and wider reach to global destinations. Recently, we also acquired BDP International, a global integrated supply chain and logistics solutions provider and we're now able to open up BDP's offerings to also PSA's customers. We place very strong emphasis on staff training and people development. For any new ventures uh, overseas, we focus on transferring our skills to local employees, creating job opportunities, and providing pathways for development of local expertise. Uh, regarding suggestions uh, for the port and logistics sector of, of Bangladesh, May I start to emphasize uh, the pivotal role that ports play in the logistic ecosystem, facilitating the country's connections to global markets. Bangladesh plans to enhance its ports and develop world-class port infrastructure will be crucial to support and facilitate its expected strong trade growth. The successful implementation of major projects like the Chattogram Bay Terminal will also contribute significantly towards Bangladesh's achievements of its sustainable development goals under the government's uh, new fire plan. PSA is keen to participate in the development of the Bay Terminal Project and is presently carrying out our feasibility studies. We are committed to work closely with the government of Bangladesh to invest and develop this iconic project. When completed, we expect the Bay Terminal Project to transform the port sector, enhance local logistic ecosystem and expand Chattogram's port's connections to the world. Successful ports, however, require supporting infrastructure such as, as uh, road and rail hinterland connectivity. As we build up the port facilities, it will be important for landside infrastructure to also be developed in tandem to facilitate the increased flow of traffic and goods. As a result, close coordination with key stakeholders such as the Ministry of Rail and Ministry of Road will be important to realize the full potential of any port development. We believe that the government of Bangladesh also plays an important role in providing the right conditions to attract foreign investments into the country. For example, a fair and consistent legal and regulatory framework will give foreign investors comfort in knowing that their investments into Bangladesh will be safe. Finally, ensuring port competitiveness is ultimately driven by criteria such as port cost, handling efficiency, hinterland connectivity, and the quality of infrastructure and services. While potential private sector investors uh, like PSA can seek to introduce capabilities to meet such criteria, it's important for appropriate port regulatory framework to be in place to ensure there's free competition inter-port as well as intra-port. This will ensure sustainability for private operators to improve efficiency 
to invest and to ensure that there's uh, increased productivity to the benefit of port users and cargo owners. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lee. We see that uh, on your backdrop, it says is the world's port of call, not yet Bangladesh is. So whatever needs to be done. So please get that done and get, get yourself to Bangladesh soon. And uh, we need to see that economic transformation that has taken uh, Singapore as a global, um, you know, maritime champion in the global arena. And Bangladesh is actually. So we look forward to your support and we look forward to keep welcoming you back to Bangladesh. And of course, I must mention, uh, ex please accept our apologies because you came to Bangladesh in person to join this event, but we had to reschedule this event due to the uh, emergency meeting of the Honorable Chief Guest. But however, we sincerely appreciate your support towards DCCI. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Sir. And at this point of time, we have um, with us the Honorable Member of the Chittagong Port Authority, uh, Mr. Mohammad Zafar Alam. He's been with the port for quite some time. And uh, he has been actually, I've had the pleasure of working with him in person. And uh, of course, an expert in his, by his own rights. Uh, we, um, you heard the keynote, sir. And uh, we wish to seek your uh, views and also the um, steps and roles that the Chittagong Port Authority uh, can take for time, cost, um, process, uh, basically the efficient port logistics. And uh, long story short, um, how we can um, obtain that target to facilitate a port which is uh, contributing to nine, facilitating 90% of the entire trade of Bangladesh. So, over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Dr. Shru. That uh, the global port faces. In fact, uh, in Chittagong, you know that uh, in his presentation, he mentioned that uh, the Chittagong port is currently the tool port model following. Uh, in fact, uh, in the gray port scenario, where the port uh, could not jump into the green fuel port, and it's moved through the tool port model to the green port, greenfield port. So we are in the uh, in our northern and southern side, that is Bay Terminal to the Mathabari. Is that everything the Dong Port Authority is doing inside the port? But there, is, this is a cycle of uh, uh, stakeholder, and every stakeholder, each and every stakeholder, is important for its contribution. Other, if anyone is missing, then the port is stuck up, and. Uh, one of the important stakeholders is the custom authority. And very recently, they have issued, uh, released the time release study. And in that study, the, uh, for the efficiency of the Chirong port, in fact, the time release study, 50% onus lies on the importer, that is, those who imports, and some shipping agents, and, and the CNF, uh, and Chirong Port Authority and custom took 17% and 16%. But if you look uh, the port performance, what port is doing, port, in fact, the pre birthing uh, rightly pre uh, Dr. Masrud mentioned that pre birthing time is an uh, important factor in Chittagong. But at the same time, Chirong Port can accommodate 2,500 uh, TUs uh, uh, vessels, but unfortunately, the vessels brings only 800, 1,000 1, or 1,200 TUs container. So if the one ship can bring the 2,500 TUs container, then we can accommodate another ship in another berth. So this is another problem over there. But after berthing, we took very little time and we just discharged the container and wait for the, for the importer. Then the importer's chance started. And in this way, the five, four days, the common landing time, and then the importers come. And we have studied that uh, there are the, uh, if, if you look at the time release, the study of the uh, customs and the, our study, there are many other uh, action actors, they took time in Chidong Port. And moreover, the traffic system, if you think about the transportation that is hinterland connectivity, that is very important. And we, in the hinterland con connectivity, Chittagong port has no, uh, in fact, inputs in the hinterland connectivity. So Chittagong port rightly increasing its uh, efficiency, uh, in increasing its efficiency by adding the equipment, adding the yard area, and reducing its time um, in, in every sector. And we are, one good news is that 
in, in fact, in the existing Chitong port, that uh, we are going to increase the draft from 9.2 uh, to 10 meter, uh, up to 10 meter, because uh, in fact, a study done, uh, doing, uh, doing by the HR willing food, they suggest that we can bring 10 meter draft vessel in the Chittagong port. And, and the length also, about, we are going to increase the 200 meter. So that will bring a very good news for Chittagong, importer and exporter of Chittagong port. And in fact, uh, um, w- what we need to look into the issues, that is the custom clearance procedure, procedure everything done inside the Chitong port, the physical verification, the percentage of the physical verification, uh, it's a 10 to 8 to 10 percent, and, uh, and, 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 and uh, physical verification is one of the important aspects because the three uh, TU's container area is occupied for the physical verification. One is for the container, another is the goods removed from the container, and one is the truck. So this is the very gray area and uh, this should be reduced and there must be some green channel in the Chidong. Uh, uh, custom must introduce the green channel for their, uh, um, uh, for their, their customers, valued customers, and it could improve, improve the logistic capacity, a logistic uh, efficient uh, port and Chidong port will be efficient port uh, in future. I think uh, uh, we are, the good news is that the PCT is ready and we are eagerly waiting to uh, open it. And as soon as this is, um, uh, the secretary sir is here and uh, m- m- their role is very important to open the PCT because uh, the PCT is fully ready and we can start operation. There are three berths and we can accommodate three more berths in um, uh, Chitawang port. The cargo, in fact, the cargo is the problem in uh, right now. So because Chirong port is, it was a cargo port and it turns into the com- uh, container port and the cargo um, berths are reducing by reducing the cargo berth. And the cargo is the now rightly is a big challenge. Uh, in fact, if you look at the in terms of the metric ton, there are uh, only 29% cargo in metric ton comes through the container. But the huge effort we have to give in, in the container system and still, the rest of the cargo, that is 70% cargo, is come through the bulk, break bulk, or bulk cargo, or the liquid cargo. So, and with this 70%, 50% is discharged in the outside, outer enclosures. So, this is the area. So, we can we can make uh, cargo bath also, and we are doing that. But in fact, our riverine system, riverine routes are very important. They are player. And they are playing a very good role because we cannot take all cargo through the road system because our road is not also very efficient and very wide uh, to handle all cargo. So we have to look into the river inland riverine system, and we have uh, we must in, we can introduce the flat bottom barge that can fly through the Sandeep challenge challenge channel that is the uh, uh, bottlenecks. So uh, throughout the year we can move the um, vessels from the Chirong port to the River Rhine ports uh, all over the country. And in this way, we can improve the logistic uh, capacity of Chitong port and the Bangladesh also. So thank you for giving me the opportunity. And uh, um, uh, and uh, thank you once again. Thank you, Dr. Mashrut, uh, for his brilliant presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed Zafar, uh, Zafar Alam. Uh, for your valued remarks, uh, needless to mention, the private sector is actually a very hungry sector as opposed to the uh, public sector. So we will assure that we will um, uh, emphasize on, on all the support required. And of course, it is the job of the chambers and the trade organizations to make policy recommendations. So we are going to make an outcome report, as I mentioned in my uh, welcome address. And uh, we keep uh, looking forward to your continued support. And at the same time, um, thank you very much um, for joining us virtually despite your busy schedule. Um, at this point of time, I would like to welcome another uh, guest who is here with us today. We have with us the member harbor marine of the Mongla port, Commodore Muhammad Abdul Wadud Tarabda. And my question to you remains the same. You are the second port in the country and how uh, we can um, enhance our capacities to facilitate the ever-growing global trade. I would request you to join us on the podium and uh, share your remarks. Commodore Muhammad Abdul Wadi Taragdar. Uh, 
بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ٹوڈیز چیف گیسٹ مسٹر مصطفیٰ کمال آنریبل سیکرٹری منسٹری آف شپنگ اور پریسیڈنٹ ڈھاکا چیمبر آف کامرس اینڈ انڈسٹری دی لارنڈ پینلسٹ اینڈ دی آنریبل گیسٹ السلام علیکم اینڈ گڈ آفٹر نون ان فیکٹ فرسٹ آف آل آئی لائک ٹو کنفی مائی ہارٹ فیل تھینکس ٹوڈے از دی کی نوٹ اسپیکر for understanding and recognizing the strength of our port as well as the, the business industry. And next is the, I also like to thank him for outlining the limitations or the uh, bottlenecks that we have in promoting the sea trade or the business. But I like to also add one more limitations to the his list that he has mentioned already, that is our biasness towards only Chittagong port. Bangladesh has got two seaport, in fact, three seaport, and the Paira port is just coming up. The Mongla port he has got a history of 70 years, and he has already rightly mentioned in his uh, presentation the growth rate of the Mongla port. Mongla port initially started journey in 1950 as a river port in the name Chalna. Initially, it used to transport the jute and jute products from Chalna to Calcutta, from where it was exported to the Western countries. Later on, it became seaport, moved to Mamla, and became a really seaport. However, in the 2001 to 2006 or 7, it became a Sikh industry or Sikh port. And as the present prime minister took over the helm of the country, she took really drastic action to revive the port and the port operation. Now you can see the success of Mongla port and our keynote speaker has rightly shown the growth rate. The growth rate is really very, very charming. And I like to assure that the way forward he has presented in his presentation, many of the uh, role model has been already uh, practiced uh, by Mongla port. First of all, uh, one of the... First of the, the one of the key uh, principle he has mentioned about the PPP model. In fact, Mongla port is already applying that PPP model. It, two of the container jetties with the gantry crane facility and the container delivery yard is being constructed under the public-private partnership model. It is already being done. And about the container handling and the ship berthing. You see the uh, limitations you have mentioned. They're moving the transport from Dhaka to Chittagong or Chittagong to Dhaka. He has already mentioned that the average uh, speed is 19 km per hour. But uh, we like to look forward or look towards the western side, towards the Mongla port. You see the journey time from Mongla to Dhaka. It takes even less than four hours. Yesterday I came, it took only three hours from Mongla port. I started my office at, finished my office at three o'clock and I arrived Dhaka at six. So this is this time. So now the businessmen are going in the morning, doing their job in the Mongla and coming back in the afternoon. But you see the transport uh, time, traveling time. So we have to look towards the Western side, not looking towards only the Chittagong, then we can never improve. You see the Chittagong port, it has got a history of 130 years. They are importing cargo, Oh, sorry, car for long times ago, but Mongla port started importing cargo only 2013. And in last only 10 years, last 10 years, Mongla port has secured the 60% of car import business in Bangladesh. In last fiscal year, Mongla port imported more than 21,000 car and Chittagong port imported just 13,000 car. So this is how Mongla port is a promising sector and I will not uh, extend my lecture further, but I will urge everyone, please look towards Mongla port, look towards the western side of our country and Mongla port is a promising port and Mongla port can really assure many of the business possibilities that you, you can explore. Thank you very much. I think that is how we can improve. Thank you. Thank you, Kamal Karada, for your uh, valued remarks. We will definitely take that into note. At this point of time, we have with us 
another foreign investor in Bangladesh, which is Mr. Shamimul Haq. He is the country director of DP World, DP World Bangladesh. Um, of course, you have been um, the DP World is uh, a logistics pioneer in Dubai. Uh, needless to mention, everybody knows about Dubai Port. It is a, a global player in the market. So, what can be replicated in Bangladesh? Uh, or at the same time, we also want you to share with us what made you interested in Bangladesh at the same time. So sure. you can speak from here if you want. That's no problem. Sure. Well, <clears throat> first of all, thank you very much for uh, for inviting me. Um, with it is of course uh, an honor to be in this panel um, where we have our uh, our own secretary. Um, <clears throat> I think I think you've, you've you've asked the right question. Why are we here? Why is DP World here? So DP World has been. Uh, is it better if I go there? <laughs> it's okay. All right. Okay. Um, DP World has been interested in Bangladesh for a very very long time. We, 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 I think the first time we had a look at what can be done in this country, that was 2009. Since then, we've engaged. Uh, we have looked at the possibilities. We were very much inspired by, um, I think it was 2017 with Honorable Prime Minister in an economic forum. Uh, she uh, encouraged to look at Bangladesh as, a, as an economic hub, as a logistic hub. Uh, she talked about, if I, she said that beyond our 162 million people in Bangladesh, Bangladesh can, can be the connecting landmass for about a market of 3 billion people. Now that's vision. So that we've been in, inspired by the vision and we said, okay, we are a global port operator among the top five. Um, but looking at Bangladesh, looking at where Bangladesh is at the moment, how do we bring what we do here and make it meaningful and add value? So we thought that the first thing would be to start off by talking to people who are using the facilities, who are in the business. So we, we went around, we engaged consultants, we went around, we spoke to about 150 different stakeholders. These included um, the, the businesses, the trades, the exporters, importers, custom authorities, the various level of government, policy makers to understand what is really needed for Bangladesh. What could make the difference? What could really impact uh, what we are trying to do, what we are trying to achieve through our 2031 and to our, through our 2041 goals and visions? So, um, it was quite clear that the port in itself will not solve all our problem. Because as, you, as you've heard Mr. Mr. Jaffer, Zafar just mentioned, just mentioned that you know, a lot of things has improved in the port. I mean, I've been associated with this since 87. So I've had, uh, except for 10 years out of the country, I've spent a lot of time looking, seeing how the port has, has improved. And honestly speaking, port has come a long, long way. Uh, we, we have to give credit where credit is due. Uh, I mean, there was a time uh, work would stop if it rained. Uh, that, was, that was the situation that we came out of. Um, but the question we asked ourselves is, what got us here? Will it get us to the next place? And the answer was a resounding no. So what, what needs to be done? So we looked at the entire logistic system, the ecosystem. And we said the country would require a logistic integrated logistic platform that includes because the hub, uh, the production hub at the moment, considering garment is the main uh, export commodity we have. I mean, that is another issue. We need, to, we need to expand that trade basket. So Dhaka needs to be connected. Dhaka needs to be connected to the ports. So we came up with a concept note uh, that we presented to the government in 2019, just before we were hit by COVID, very unfortunate. 
uh, that we had to, we, we lost a lot of time uh, in that, but we recovered. And, and they, this, this integrated logistic platform includes dry ports like the Rasram, the rail ICD. Currently we have the rail ICD in Kamlapur, right in the middle of the city. You come from any direction, it will take you two hours. And of course, we as uh, I was in shipping before, and every time uh, my friends mentioned that we saw your container, it came with a with their disclaimer, but it kept me waiting for three hours. Why? Because the train went right through the city. Maybe three hours is an ex exaggeration. But um, so the government has the right visions. Take ICD out. Take it to the Rastram, which which would be able to handle almost 0.45 million containers once it's completely functional. Then we looked at Bay Terminal, we looked at the current ports and what can be done there. So our proposal is an integrated logistic platform proposal that includes ports, that includes uh, IC, rail ICD. There are also side uh, issues that we looked at, we looked at you know, what can be done in the trucking area, what can be done in warehousing, what can be done in cold chain, because all of this makes up logistics at the end of the day. And as, as, uh, as Mr. Masrur quite rightly said, uh, that reduction of cost is vital. That's what the, if we listen to the voice of the customers, that's what they've been screaming at us. We need to reduce costs. Global experience says that if you reduce logistic costs by 10%, it usually ends with a 8% growth in trade. That is a sort of a global phenomenon that's been seen everywhere else. Now, uh, how, do we, how do we do that? And that, that's probably you know, what has been addressed by this presentation so well that when I sat down to decide what to say here and I read the presentation, then I said, there's nothing much left for me to say. <laughs> it has been very well covered. The only thing I would I would add to this is, you know, as we you know we read papers, we read, um, we listen to media, and and we come to these seminars. And one thing that comes out very clear, uh, and uh, uh, honourable secretary, I mean, if you forgive me for saying this, the 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 need for coordination between the multiple agencies that are involved is very important. I mean, Chittagong Port cannot alone make the difference. Customer has to come together. The uh, roads and highways have needs to come together. All of this needs to happen uh, in, a, in a coordinated fashion. That's why I'm very, very, very pleased to hear about the logistic strategy that's coming up. I hope that there will be, it will be inclusive. So there will be sessions like this where we, we get to hear the voice of the users, the people who are actually using the system. What do they need? And uh, for, for, for the larger part, Bay Terminal, yes, will be a game changer, without a doubt, because it's deeper. It will bring bigger vessels. It will give opportunities to look at uh, direct services, if not completely direct all the way to, to Europe, at least to transship in Salala or transship in Jebel Ali. That should save time, because that's the Second, that's the second worry the customers, if you like, the users have, the traders have, that it takes way too long. To turn around a garment in, in Vietnam, I think it takes about 50 days altogether. It takes us 120 days, even today. We cannot move up the value chain. We cannot produce Hugo Boss suits or, or other makes that, I have to ask my children what they are. I'm not a really fashionable person. But you know, if we want to get, get to that standard, if we want to get, get up that value chain, we need to reduce the turnover time. How fast do we turn around? Uh, and what, what does then these operators like PSA and, and, and DP World, what do we bring? We bring the global experience. We bring the best practices. We bring the, the, the strength to, 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 to bring on the investment quickly. We, we, need, we, need, we bring the ability to react, rather, sorry, rather act than react, to be ready, to be proactive, uh, rather than reacting to situations. And that ability, 
uh, we are very happy that that has been recognized and that the government is now opening up through PPPA. Uh, the only thing that can be said is that the way we look at how the trade is growing, if you looked at the CAGR, then uh, quite honestly, if we look at all the installations, all the projects that we have, and we have a number of them, we have Patenga, we have, uh, you know, Chittagong Port has been, uh, you know, refurbished and uh, equipments have been added, capacity has been increased. We, we have uh, Matabari, we have Bay Terminal, but all of this will still not be enough. Will still not be enough, particularly if we wait. We need things to happen quickly so that at least we can, there is, we, there is no need to stunt the growth. The resilience of the private sector is absolutely amazing. I think the whole world is watching, watching what is happening in Bangladesh and thanks to the private sector. But that uh, growth cannot be, cannot be in any way stunted by not having the capacity ready. So it is the, for all of us to, to at least um, you know, try to do our part. We are eager, we are ready. Uh, so sir, we want to get going. And uh, we hope that uh, you know, we, we, we look forward to having Bangladesh as our, as our partner in progress. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shamimul Haq. Um, not to contradict with your statement, but uh, Hugo Boss doesn't uh, make their suits in Bangladesh, but they do make their shoes in Bangladesh. <laughs> it's produced by Young One. Um, moving on from uh, um, an international private port operator to um, local private port operator. Uh, Summit Alliance Sport needs no introduction. We have with us today the Managing Director of Summit Alliance Sport, Mr. Syed Ali Joharizri. Um, so my question to you, that how the government can facilitate efficient private port management and at the same time to ensure the seamless cross-border trade and of course um, the challenges you may have faced and of course uh, whenever we talk about challenges or, or on the other end of the tunnel there are opportunities so which are untapped. So we want to hear your views from the private sector as a port operator. Ladies and gentlemen, Syed Ali Johar Rizvi. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. President, for inviting me and giving me the opportunity. Uh, with the permission of uh, chief guests and without further ado, I would like to get to the point. Uh, but before that, of course, I would like to say hello to my friend who has virtually joined from Singapore. Hi, Lifeng. Good to see you. And also Zafar Bhai, you are there. Asalaamu Alaikum to you. Uh, Dr. Riaz, thank you very much. As uh, Shamim Bhai said, you covered everything, so there's nothing. Probably, I thought I'll speak for five minutes. Uh, Mr. President, I'll finish it in three minutes because he has covered everything. Uh, Dr. Riaz, you have done a very good uh, uh, job. You know, thank you very much. Uh, and thanks uh, to the uh, Dhaka Chamber of Commerce. I already have a soft copy. I intend to make it a hard copy and, you know, go through it over and over. But Dr. Riaz, there was just one uh, question to you uh, that I was slightly surprised that you did ad address about uh, the growth, uh, and everything about, and you know, not you're not talking about 3.2 million. Sector did not grow in last 10 years. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'll just give you an example. In 2010 and 11, our total garments, I'm, I'm, I'm restricting to garments because that, that is uh, uh, what should I say, the, uh, the mover and sh 